Good afternoon, then. My name is Phil Jacklin. Uh, I run my own little company called Gorilla Working. But prior to that, two years ago, I was uh, head of ICT at Durham County Council. But perhaps what was more relevant is I led on the Digital Durham program, which is a collaboration of 10 local authorities uh, to bring superfast broadband uh, to the region. A, a successful campaign, I, I hate to add. We ended up with the best broadband in the country, in fact, faster than London. Well, it would be for the best, I suppose. There you go. Uh, believe me though that uh, getting 10 local authorities to work together was an only an achievement and uh, very proud of that success. Having said that, we realised that the majority of that was based upon fiber to the cabinet, uh, sort of tech, uh, copper using on the, on the final mile, and uh, that technology I think has moved on and now the, the, the drive very much is towards full fiber. Uh, so again we're going to have to revisit that as we go forward. So just to be clear, what we're wanting to do today is to give you some money. Okay. £2.5 million pounds worth of the RDF money we have available. But it must be matched. The maximum amount that we can put in is 60% of the cost, so 40% uh, match is required from you. The purpose is to deliver fibre to business premises. That's the condition that the RDF uh, uh, requires. That's the only, reason, only uh, way you could get the money from the European Regional Development Fund. But we want you to do that in a way that maximises access to retail, sorry, to residential premises. So snake it through uh, and use the businesses as anchor tenants or as end clients and pass as many properties as we can. So that's the objective of what we're trying to do. Maximise the amount of businesses, but maximise the amount of access to residential premises past. It's up to you how you connect those, etc., etc., and whether or not to do it with a car or so this is the current position, and um, in the second phase of the ITT, which Julie will explain to you in a minute, we'll provide you with as much detail as we can in terms of proper maps, and, uh, but this gives you an indication. So this shows you the different colours of the different um, types of broadband that we have uh, access to at the moment. So um, the green is superfast broadband through over Ridge or BT, and that's predominantly fibre to the cabinet. <coughs> um, We've got some virgin, there's the brown stuff, which is their coaxial cable. Um, excuse me if I got that wrong, but that, that 300 meg at the moment or something? Where's the virgin? Yeah, it's about 300 meg at the most? Yeah. yeah, okay, so that's fine. And uh, we've got um, so other, the, the light blue is other virgin broadband, and the pink is FTTP from fiber to the premises. So as you can see, FTTP is very small. Uh, little pockets, and the predominant is either the uh, the green stuff, which is fine to the cabinet. We can see it's extensive coverage, but uh, not the best of it. Well, it's it's backstabbed around about 80. But what you can see is that there are significant white pockets all over the place where there is no broadband at all, and that's where the two percent of the population uh, live. And yet you might say, oh, yeah, okay, they're, they're very small villages and that sort of thing. But that's not strictly true, and I'll come on to that in a second. So you might think, okay, this is a broadband to the uh, to the house problem. It's a residential problem, but there are many issues that we want to address. First of all, this is both a rural and a semi-urban area. Yeah, there's lots of there's five principal towns with lots of uh, built-up areas in the region, but there are big green spaces in between, and we don't want to forget these people. Um, there are some urban areas which just are just too difficult for open reach to get to, either because of geography, there's a river in the way, or there's an the, the A19 in the way, which makes it very difficult to cross, and so the, the cost is just too prohibitive when you're going through them. I think I'm there. Uh, repeat that, sorry. It's commercial sites, uh, commercial sites which uh, haven't been addressed as we would because the BDUK program is predominantly residential, and we'd like those to be addressed. There's still some problems in the towns and the city centres. Uh, it's not all roses in, in, uh, in each of the, the towns, and we'd like those to be addressed. And there's these two sites that uh, Keith referred to earlier, um, such as the airport. And I see we've just announced that today that flights to Spain will take, take will depart summer next year. So that there's a huge amount of work going behind this, and there's huge opportunity. But predominantly, I think, around the businesses and uh, and moving freight from the airport is a huge opportunity and, and build a business park around that. So, so we need some, uh, some stuff uh, built around that. And the former SSI site, uh, which again, needs some good connectivity to bring businesses in. Uh, and uh, there's this additional work that Openreach are, are, have currently just come back with and they've 
identify the additional properties that they're going to do and put that into the mix. So this is the picture that has emerged um, over the last few years. OMR, Open Market Review, that's where we go out the market and say, what are your plans for the next three years? And, and then we take the number of properties that are outside of those plans. So we take uh, Darlington, for example, in 2016, there's just under 3,000. 1,000 of those were done by 2018. And in the latest OMR, we've got a further 700 of those are going to be done. So it's been a gradual progression of uh, properties to get to that 98.1%. So still a couple of grand, a couple of thousand properties would need to get to that 98.1%. But as Keith said, that figure isn't good enough. We'd like uh, 100%. So there are approximately 312,000 properties in Tees Valley area. Uh, and the number of properties to get to 100% is just under 12,000. So think of the 12,000 number rather than just the 1,800 number. The government has just announced that it wishes to connect uh, 15 million premises by, to full fibre by the end of 2015 and everybody by 2033. So really the message is that we need to connect with fibre in this process rather than go to FTTC. That will that'll kill those two birds with one stone. So, I have a number of maps, a map for each of the areas, and we'll provide much better quality maps uh, when it comes down to the uh, invitation of the tender. But this shows that there are, um, this is Darlington, and there are substantial Is that Favourdale around here? What is it? No, that's uh, <coughs> Orton Arms Business Park. Uh, yeah. Favourdale is on the top. Yep. Yeah. Top northwest, under the, the eastern area. So it's, it's not it's not just pockets of rurality, although there's substantial uh, areas of here of, of, of urban, well, semi-urban areas, but there are pockets directly in the towns and the cities which need to... Uh, well, we quantify that, and then, well, yes, I have the local knowledge of Darlington. We're looking about you know, 500 businesses. Excellent. And Darlington alone. Darlington. Exactly. And so we can maybe times that across the, the region. So we're talking about 2,000 businesses. Our fellow authorities in Hartlepool, uh, Stockton, Redcam, mm -hmm. they have similar problems. Yes. And it had something to do here that we couldn't use here, the UK money here, well, in that sense here, to put <coughs> in for our uh, super fast or well, even faster connections into here, the industrial states, because of the uh, well, rules and, well, it was predominantly a residential uh, program. Absolutely, yeah. and uh, because yeah, well, within the, well, the industrial states, some of the firms are bigger, and the premises covered then yeah, wouldn't have fitted here the value for money criteria as well. Indeed. Okay, this is Harleypool, and again, there are pockets of uh, areas which are uncovered, but this is the A19 that goes right through it, and often acts as a complete barrier. For, it's quite difficult, we found it quite difficult to get uh, traffic there. Uh, Connectivity across the A19 because you potentially have to shut the road and nobody wants to shut the A19. Although it seems to be shut every morning when I come down into the And Middlesbrough, again, um, the SSI is up this way, isn't it? Oh yeah, there's probably a red car coming from that when yes. I come down to that. John, you, you know of any, any areas in Middlesbrough that well, It tends to be the town centre itself, it's how it's Town centre is one of the areas. Uh, it's the areas around uh, the, the, the Riverside Park as well. Yeah. Uh, we can go as well. Well into the area which is developable, and that's, that's something here which is around the Riverside Stadium. Uh, it's a very compact area uh, in its size, but in terms of your ball and the amounts, it probably sits on the same level in terms of coverage needed. <coughs> And the, the game changer here is uh, going from super fast uh, to ultra fast plus and uh, the gigabyte ones because yeah. well as you know as uh, well operators in that, that business here well businesses often have you know well, dedicated lines for it you know, and they go here very fast and they cost quite a lot of money here to install so it's the infrastructure going into the industrial estates which is really uh, like. Yeah, so, so yeah, fiber to the, to the premises as well. 
future proofing and that we want to try and do, including the 5G stuff that we need. Well, we need ubiquitous fiber really to, to drive that forward. A red cloud in Cleveland, yeah, quite a patchy picture. Um, this is, is this the SSI set up here? <coughs> yes, yeah, yes that's that's it. so you can see it's a, it's a substantial amount of land here for development, and uh, a substantial amount of money is going to be invested in that for businesses to bring a new business there. Possible side of the free port, if yes. that gets off the ground, mm -hmm. if ports can get off the ground, but there yes. you go. Um, so both transport and logistics are key areas of, uh, for Tees Valley to, 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 to think about. But the, the one thing to be said is we have rough ideas where we know there are gaps. That's part of what we're, this exercise is about, is you coming in as specialists within this area and being able to find those communities, those premises, those businesses which need to be enabled. That's what, that's what we really think the value add of what you're going to be doing is to get out there and to be able to um, identify those gaps and provide unique solutions for them. And that's maybe what we'll talk about, the technical solutions which could be uh, permissible under this program because it's a little bit um, easier than what would be under the BDU, BDUK program in terms of the technologies used. Could be, could be. And uh, finally for Stockton, again big pockets of uh, big pockets of, of, of white space which with not many properties in but there's, then there's still other places where there are uh, plenty of uh, houses to go to. So the idea is to use the businesses to drive the fibre through or to pull the fibre through and then as many residential properties as possible. And we're giving far better maps when we come down to the ITT.